Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. But who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And who is he? Bruce Rivers, he's the criminal lawyer. And what he do? And he's gonna react to all the self snitching. Oh. Hi, this is Bruce Rivers. Welcome to another fun-filled episode of Criminal Lawyer Reacts. I'm Bruce Rivers, accompanied by our content genius who's behind the camera as we speak, controlling every single one of my words and actions. Not really, but uh, he is our content genius. And I've you know I've been away for a month, and I can tell you this, I missed him like nobody's business. And so it feels good to be back in the saddle. Today we're reacting to what it's like to be a cop on the street and make a split-second decision. But before we get to this video, this is brought to you by ContractsCouncil.com. ContractsCouncil.com is an effective way for you to two things. One, we we need lawyers. We, you know, and I know some of you guys, and I know some of you guys and gals who are lawyers are fans of the channel. So if you are, go to ContractsCouncil.com and sign up because you can make a little bit of extra money working from the comfort of your own home. You can work as much or as little as you want. We have a lot of clients. We need more lawyers. So if you are a lawyer who wants to do a little bit of work from home or a lot of work from home, sign up for contractscouncil.com. It's an effective way to do remote legal work for some really good people. And if you need a contract written for whatever purpose, go to contractscouncil.com and you will be taken care of. Now, being a cop is a very, very difficult job. They're not overly educated. Um, some of them are real, you know, go into it for the right reason and some go into the for the wrong reason but uh but regardless of what reason they go into it with they have a difficult job because they deal with the public on a regular basis on the street and sometimes they have to make split second decisions so let's this is a, a colorado cop swiftly reacts shoots a woman while she pulls a gun uh during a traffic stop what do you got there now? what do you got in there what do you got you hear that stress in his voice? I mean, that's how quickly a life can change for somebody. Newly released body camera video shows a deadly shooting in Colorado after a woman allegedly pulled a gun at an officer who fatally shot her. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It was just before 5 p.m. on July 25th when a Westminster, Colorado officer noticed an SUV parked in the road facing the wrong direction. Video shows him approach a forward-facing Jeep asking what's going on. So this gal, if you look at it in the foreground, there's a, a vehicle in the wrong lane, and then you get this gal stopped. Just, how long have you been here? Okay, I'll get him done. I'll see what's up. The officer, Nick Adams, then approaches the parked vehicle. The woman inside, later identified as 46-year-old Alicia Duran, initially refuses to roll down the window. Eventually, Duran gives in and puts the window down, but refuses to answer the officer's questions. You're in the wrong lane. No. Are you okay? Now, you don't have to answer an officer's questions. That's, that doesn't give him rise to yank you out of the car or, or, you know, pull a gun on you. But... When you see somebody like this and she seems she's in the wrong lane, so she's posing a traffic safety hazard to begin with, and she seems off. Are you okay, ma'am? What's going on? Tell me what's going on. Are you okay? Adams can be heard asking whether she's okay and calling in the situation on his radio. Can you tell me what's going on? Why are you in the wrong lane? Can you tell me why you're in the wrong lane? Now, when you have a situation like this where there's, you've got one car over there, I think I would have probably told that car to go, to leave. You know, I would have to, said, you need to, you can, you, you, the green uh, Jeep that is, because there's no reason for her to be stopped. 
right? She, I mean, she could probably get around and go a different route. But it's got to be frustrating for the cop in the sense that you're just trying to get to the bottom of, of what's going on here. And because it doesn't seem like a crime, it doesn't seem like she's drunk. The only crime is that she's in the wrong lane. And it seems more like there's a medical thing going on almost, like a, or a psych thing going on. I don't know what I got here. I got a female that won't answer any questions. I think I'm in our vet. I'm in our turn lane to go into the shops if you want to start one of them. Duran only replies when the officer asks whether she needs an ambulance. What's going on? Can you tell me what's going on there? Please? Are you okay? Do you need an ambulance? Are you all right? Okay. When he asks if she's been drinking, she reverts back to silence. Have you, have you been drinking or anything? It doesn't look like you've been drinking. So it's very, so the cop is genuinely concerned and he's, he's not, when you think about the kind of the, the level, you know, of what the, where the cop is at, you know, a lot of these, you know, especially during the day, the traffic stops are mundane, you know, routine, uh, failure signal, speeding, you know, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and this is just, you know. It's then that Duran reaches for something in her middle console. Adams can be heard asking her what it is before realizing it's a gun. So one of two reasons why she would pull that gun. She intends to shoot the cop or she wants the cop to shoot her. What do you got in there? 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 See, he went from mundane to here like in two seconds. And this is just a very split second uh, decision this cop has to make. Adams. So you, you can actually, if you, if you blow up on this, you can actually see her in the mirror pointing the gun. Her arm before backing off and shooting at her. What do you got there? What do you got there? Oh! So you can see the angle that he's at. He's at a disadvantage, really. Immediately, Adams puts out a shots fired call and yells for Duran to stay still. 225, shots fired, shots fired. See, there's a, a freeze frame. It's hard to tell what that is, but it looks like she's got her hand out the window with the gun. Don't move. All units, code 9, channel 1, responding unit, Sam 25. Are you okay? Are you okay? When backup arrives at the scene, Adams removes the gun from the vehicle where Duran is already unresponsive. I've got the gun secured. No response from her. What do you mean? People downrange appear to be code four. Let's get her out of the car. You get the gun, I'll get her out of I'm, the car. Yeah, I'm trying to do okay. all that, man. I, Give me a minute. You grab the gun, I got her. Just get that out of here. You can hear the stress in his voice. I mean, it's just... Most cops can go their whole career without, a, without shooting somebody. And uh, I, my uncle was a, a cop down in um, Rochester, Minnesota. He went 30 years on the force without ever even pulling his gun. It's a small town and another time and place, but uh, it is not uncommon for cops never to see this kind of action. I don't think so. I got no pulse. All right, I'm securing this, man. We have in I'm securing this in my car. Adams then approaches the Jeep parked nearby, asking if everyone inside is okay. Are you all right? Copy, we have fire started. Are you okay? No one inside Jesus the Jeep. Being a little aggressive with somebody that had nothing to do with nothing. But <clears throat> that's his stress level. He's injured, but a bullet hit the windshield. Adams can be heard apologizing to the people inside before breaking down. Ma'am? Yeah. Are you okay? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, 
I mean, it is something to shoot somebody and kill them. Unless, unless you get a screw loose. It, it, you know, we're not built to do that. You know, I mean, it really does have a, a, an effect on you. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He continues on explaining what happened just moments before. She wouldn't talk to me. She just, she had some, some like charm or something and she wouldn't talk to me. I, I said, do you need an ambulance? What do you need? And she reached into the center console and I saw this gun. She reached for it, pointed it right at me. I was so worried I was going to shoot down range at you. Oh my God. And that's what he did. So it's really, you know, he, he was at a very distinct disadvantage in that he didn't really have a good angle to respond to that driver. The person inside the vehicle then identifies themselves as Jess, and Adams introduces himself again, apologizing. What's your name? Jess? You're fine, you don't need an ID. Jess, I'm Nick, okay? You're gonna need to stick around for us a little while. I'm so sorry. Holy You can call anybody. You can, I'll, I'll give you my work phone. You can call whoever you need. We'll, we'll get we'll get somebody to talk to her. Okay, I need Hold to... on a minute. I'm controlling her, man. I pull one right to her window. Okay. I mean, he's he wants to engage, and and the the adrenaline level with him has just got to be through the roof. It's a very difficult job to be a cop. Okay. Are you okay? I'm okay. I'm gonna stir this gun. I'm gonna give her my work phone so she can make some phone calls. She's sticking around for me. Okay. All right. Another officer approaches, checking whether Adams is okay. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come look at this, man. Come look at this. Next, Adams introduces Jess to the other officer before making a bizarre remark about America. This is Jess. This is my best buddy, Mark. Are you okay? Are you okay? Look, the steering wheel. It's her birthday. Oh. Okay. It's America. God bless America, Jess. I'm so sorry. What, it, what does he mean by that? You know, I hard to say it's just that you know it's a very stressful time for him and um and he just you know shot somebody who pointed a gun at him oh my god stay right here here's my phone okay next adams can be seen holding hands with another officer who appears to be comforting him seconds later another officer instructs adams to turn off his body camera video I've got the gun in my car, Sarge. Do you want me to get Mark to take the gun with us? Uh, Her gun. Here. Leave it in my car? Yeah, it's, in the, it's in the cup holder. Okay. Let's, 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 look at me. Uh, let's do this. Take, uh, let's go off. Let's go off so you can tell me what really happened. I don't like it when they do that, but there's a reason for it. I mean, because they, he wants uh, to get an unabridged version of what happened, and it's all caught on camera. You know, Cops have a very, very difficult job, and some people think, "Oh, you must hate cops because, you know, you're a, you're a defense lawyer." Nothing could be further from the truth. I love cops. They take them off the street, and I put them right back on. Now, they they do have a tough job, and ninety, probably ninety plus percent of them, um, are decent cops. You know, we you know you hear the very loudly about the ones who are bad and. Um, and they need to be held accountable, but they have a very difficult job. And if you encounter law enforcement, you're going to do one of two things. If you have a gun in your car, like say you have a concealed carry, you put your hands up and you say, your officer, I do have a weapon in here. Unless you're a felon and you got a bunch of drugs in the car, then you don't say shit. You know, cops and firemen, you know, they don't get paid commensurate with the risk of their job. They just don't. And so they're to be respected. And if they're not, if they're not respecting you, you don't respond in kind because it will not come out in your favor. Better off to just not say anything than to give a cop a bunch of shit. Because there, you get a hold of the wrong cop and you give him the wrong amount of shit, all of a sudden he, you know, does things that he's not supposed to do. Cops are human, just like everybody else. And it's very, you know, I, I see every single one of my cases has got cops involved, right? The feds usually seem to be the most professional and the, the ones with the least um, agenda, it seems, because they usually work harder on their cases and they have all their ducks in a row and so they don't really need to be an advocate. Some cops seem like they, you know, they want to spin the evidence, you know, when they get on the stand. 
But most of the time, you know, they just tell the facts of whatever case. Most cops are good cops. And, but every once in a while, you'll come across, you know, I, I will come across a cop that is just has an agenda, won't answer my questions, and he'll look like a partisan, you know. And those guys, you know, juries can see through that. So this has just been our reaction to, you know, what it takes to make a split second decision. Hard to find fault with this cop and the decision he made to use lethal force at that particular point in time. Especially when, you know, the person's not answering, all of a sudden she gets a gun, and whether she's trying to shoot him or if she wanted to draw the fire, which very well could have been. I mean, she could have tried suicide by cop. That happens. It's happened to, you know, happened in one of my cases where my client tried to do the same thing, and the cops in that case did not fire back, thankfully. And uh, he took a couple pot shots at him, and they just didn't. And then his gun jammed, and they tackled him. They didn't respond in kind. They could have riddled him with bullets, and they didn't. So I've seen it. I've seen a, a wide variety of professionalism on the police force, and this looks like it was very professional for the most part. So I'm Bruce Rivers, board certified criminal defense lawyer with our content genius. Make sure you subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, sign up for Instagram. Follow us on Twitter, follow us on Twitter or Instagram, Facebook, you know, actually go to all social media and just blast every one of our episodes because guess what? We love you. We hit a million and we're going to be doing a party. So we just, uh, we hit a million and we got our plaque, which is just amazing. And uh, so sign up for Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Make sure you follow us on, uh, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, um, sign up for Patreon, and we'll see you next time here on Criminal Lawyer Reacts. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. Bruce Rivers just broke down your case. He know all the charges that you about to face. You ain't coming home till 2058. That self snitching gon' get you put away. 23-hour lockdown, please, is that my goal?